welcome friends in our last discussions we have seen the truss element the basics of truss element and we have seen the how to generate the stiffness matrix and in that attempt we have generated the first column of the truss element k11 k21 k31 and k41 and we have generated the first column of the truss element by applying unit deflection at coordinate 1 we have also seen coordinate 1 is delta ax that is displacement of this left hand side joint a in x direction so we have applied unit displacement and these were the forces that were required for this so a e by l 0 minus a e by l 0 so we have generated the first column of the stiffness matrix now let us generate the second column of the stiffness matrix all of us know what we need to do to generate the second column of stiffness matrix yes you have judged it right apply unit displacement at coordinate 2 applying unit displacement at coordinate 2 that is delta a y is equal to 0 applying unit displacement at coordinate 2 that is delta a y is equal to 0 this is my truss element first is delta a x second is delta a y I am applying unit displacement at coordinate 2 this means my diagram will be like this I am applying unit displacement at coordinate 2 I am applying unit displacement at coordinate 2 this is delta a y is equal to 1 now my friends the deflected shape will not be like we have seen in beam element because in beam element the moment is possible joints are rigid joints in this case the moment is not possible the joints are hinge joints joints are hinge joints when we displace an element of a truss the angle between the members will change in beam element since the b joint is the rigid joint angle between the member will not change and there will be for beam element we have seen the deflection was somewhat like this because b is a rigid joint because b is the rigid joint this is beam element right since b is the rigid joint and angle between the members cannot change the deflection is like this but for truss element the angle between the since b is a hinge joint truss where the joints are hinge joints so hinge joints so delta a y when i displace delta a y the deflected shape will be like this unlike this will not be like a beam element will be like this the deflected shape will be such that the angle between the member will change and this will be the deflected shape so what are the various forces that are required to bring this change the forces very simple the force here is zero force here is zero force here is zero and force here is zero very simple for truss element no force is required for the this type of displacement so k12 i am generating second column k22 k32 and k42 k12 what is force at coordinate 1 i am comparing this with the standard truss element 1 2 3 and 4 this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 force at coordinate 1 due to unit deflection at coordinate 2 this is the diagram of unit deflection at coordinate 2 force at coordinate 2 due to unit deflection at coordinate 2 this is the diagram of unit deflection at coordinate 2 force at coordinate 3 due to unit deflection at coordinate 2 and force at coordinate 4 due to unit deflection at coordinate 4 from the diagram i can judge that all the four coordinates all the four coefficients are zero so i have generated the second column by applying unit displacement at coordinate 2 now to generate the third column i have to apply applying unit displacement at coordinate 3 applying unit displacement at coordinate 3 now where is my coordinate 3 yes all of us know my coordinate 3 is this delta bx that is displacement of b in x direction is my coordinate 3 so i am drawing the truss element again and i am applying unit displacement this means this delta b in x direction i am shifting it by unity so what are the various forces that will be required for this delta b x equal to 1 the first force that is required is a e 
upon L. We know L is the length of the member AB and AE is axial rigidity of the member. A is the area of cross section of the member and E is the modulus of elasticity of the material of the member. The first force that is required is AE upon L. The second force that is required is AE upon L in this direction. The third and fourth forces are 0 and 0. So I can generate the third column of stiffness matrix. Third column says I will compare it with standard truss element 1, 2, 3 and 4, 1, 2, 3 and 4. I cannot change the sequence. I cannot change the directions. So K13, K23, this is the third column of stiffness matrix, K33 and K43. What is K13? Force at coordinate 1 due to unit deflection at coordinate 3. Now this is the diagram of unit deflection at coordinate 3. My coordinate 1 was at A acting towards right but my force is at A acting towards left. So minus AE upon L. K23 force at coordinate 2 due to unit deflection at coordinate 3. So that is equal to 0. K33 force at coordinate 3 due to unit deflection at coordinate 3 that is plus AE upon L and K43 that is equal to 0. So I have generated the fourth column of stiffness matrix for the truss element. I have generated the fourth column of stiffness matrix of the truss element. Now the last column of the stiffness matrix, all of you must have judged it right. Yes, to generate the last column of stiffness matrix, I have to apply unit deflection at coordinate 4. I have to apply unit deflection at coordinate 4 applying unit deflection at coordinate 4 what happens by applying unit deflection this is my truss element i am applying unit deflection that is delta b y is equal to 1 that is delta b y is equal to 1 so what are the various forces that are required to bring this unit deflection 0 0 0 and 0 and as i have discussed the deflection will be like this the deflection will be like this the angle between the members can change since the joints are hinge joints a is hinge joint b is hinge joint this is the truss element and not a beam element so in beam element we have seen the deflection is causing the moments at a and b but in this case since it's a truss element and trusses do not carry any moment this is what we have learnt in truss theory in our structural analysis one that the trusses are not able to carry any moments they only carry axial forces they do not carry shear forces either and that is why this is the effect of application of unit deflection at coordinate 4 so i am able to write now i am again comparing with standard truss element 1 2 3 and 4 so k14 k24 k34 and k44 this is what we have seen if we apply a deflection at a particular coordinate we generate that column of the stiffness matrix so i am applying deflection at coordinate 4 so i am generating the fourth column of the stiffness matrix so k14 force at coordinate 1 due to unit deflection at coordinate 4 this is the diagram for unit deflection at coordinate 4 so force at coordinate 1 is 0 force at coordinate 2 is 0 force at coordinate 3 is 0 and force at coordinate 4 is 0 so the fourth column is generated so i have second column and fourth column has got same generation so second column is all zero elements and fourth column is all zero elements so i am able to write element stiffness matrix for truss element today i am able to write element stiffness matrix for the truss element like this element stiffness matrix for the truss element goes like this so k element is equal to naturally it is the 4 by 4 stiffness matrix so my first column of the stiffness matrix that is what i have seen a by l 0 minus a by l 0 that's what i am writing a e upon l 0 minus a e upon l 0 the second column i know 0 0 0 0 the third column is minus a e upon l 0 a e upon l 0 and the last column that is fourth column i have generated 
is 0, 0, 0, 0, right? This is what we have done. We have generated the first column. We have generated a second column which was 0, 0, 0. We have generated a third column which was minus AE by L, 0, AE by L, 0. And we have generated just now the last column which is all 0. So I have generated the stiffness matrix for the truss element like this. Now let us check whether the stiffness matrix, this stiffness matrix satisfies all the conditions of matrices. The first is any stiffness matrix is a square matrix. Is it a square matrix? Yes. There are four rows, four columns. It's a square matrix. Second property, the order of the stiffness matrix is equal to the degree of kinematic indeterminacy. This order is four by four. The degree of kinematic indeterminacy for the truss element we have seen. This is the truss element we have seen. It is four by four. The degree of kinematic indeterminacy for the truss element is four. And that is why the degree of the order of the stiffness matrix is four by four. So second property is satisfied. All the diagonal elements are positive. Are all the diagonal elements positive? Yes. All the diagonal elements are positive or zero. Zero or positive, no problem. And last property is other elements are symmetrical. Other elements can be positive or negative, but these elements are symmetrical. So this satisfies all the properties of stiffness matrices. Now friends, there is a fun. I will tell you. The fun is in truss element stiffness matrix, there is additional property. That is, sum of any row or sum of any column should be equal to zero. This is the special property for truss element stiffness matrix. It doesn't exist in beam element. It neither exists in frame element. It exists only in truss element that sum of any row or sum of any column is equal to zero. Let us check the first row. It is zero. First column, it is zero. Second row and second column, the sum is zero. Third row and third column, sum is zero. Fourth row and fourth column, the sum is zero. If you sum of all the elements in the fourth row, it should be equal to zero. If you sum all the elements in fourth column, it should be equal to zero. So this is the special property with respect to truss element stiffness matrix. So this is what our truss element stiffness matrix looks. Isn't it simple? It is simpler than beam element to remember. It is simpler than beam element to work. But, but there is a concept of rotation stiffness matrix and in our next discussion we will discuss what do you mean by rotation stiffness matrix what is the necessity of derivation of rotation stiffness matrix and why we need to apply the rotation stiffness matrix only to truss and frame and we have ignored that concept while applying to beam element stiffness matrix at the time of beam element stiffness matrices i told you there is no need of rotation stiffness matrix there is no need of matrix multiplication 4 by 4 into 4 by 4 but in this case it is required to generate a rotation stiffness matrix and it is required to have a stiffness matrix in rotation form and what is the necessity of rotation stiffness matrix that we are going to discuss in our next discussions in next video Thank you.